Today's practical topic will be delivered on kinometry. Kinometry is concerned with the techniques of measuring the bones of the skull. It includes measurements of different types. For example, linear, angular, depth, volume, etc. Different types of instruments are needed to take different types of measurements. Some measurements are taken directly on the skull, while others are indirectly measured on the tracing on the skull. Direct measurements are taken allowing the skull to raise on a pad or by mounting it on a cranial form. Tracing is done with the help of a set of instruments designed for the purpose. Cranial landmarks are well defined and easier to locate in comparison to those used in somatometry. As in somatometry, in craniometry also, it is always necessary to have full knowledge about the landmarks to locate them accurately and then to take the measurements correctly following the standard techniques and norms. While phrenology is the study of character and personality and physiognomy is the study of heads and features, chronometry techniques is different from the former studies as it is a technique that involves the measurements of bones of the skull. However, these fields have all claimed the ability to predict the intelligence and nature of human beings. They were once intensively practiced in physical anthropology in the 19th century. One may conveniently divide skull into two parts. First, neurocranium, that is, brain cavity and second splanchornocranium that is face. Craniometric measurements are divided into three categories such as neurocranium brain cavity, splanchornocranium face and other measurements which concerns skull as a whole. The first scientific data on anthropological craniology comes from the 16th century, when Vesalius made comparisons of prominent forms of different people like Greek, Turk, and German. One of the first attempts at craniometry was made by Spegel. He measured four diameters of skull, namely facial, transverse, vertical and oblique to classify the various skulls. Dalberton applied craniometric method to study cranial characteristics. He observed the position of foramen magnum which varies between posterior and interior sides of the skull in different animals including man. Hoven used 11 measurements to study human cranium. Regius established relationship between cranial length and breadth 
by calculating length breadth cranial index. Carl von Beer calculated length height index. Peter Camper developed projection method to obtain craniometric data on developed projection method to obtain craniometric data on skull. He invented the facial angle to classify different races in the world. This scientific research was continued by Ethan Geoffroy St. Hilaire and Paul Broca. Measurements were first made to compare the skulls of men with those of other animals. This wide comparison constituted the first subdivision of craniometric studies. At the turn of the 19th century, Franz Joseph Brun developed craniotoscopy, a method to determine the personality and development of maintain and moral faculties on the basis of the external shape of the skull. Craniotoscopy was later renamed as phrenology by his student Johann Spurgeon. In the 19th century, the name of notable contributors to the literature of craniometry quickly increased in number. While it is impossible to analyze its contribution or even record a complete list of the names of the authors, notable researchers who use craniometric methods to compare humans to other animals include Paul Broca, founder of the Anthropological Society in 1859 in France, and T.X. Huxley of England. Samuel George Morton, one of the inspirers of physical anthropology, collected hundreds of human skulls from all over the world and started trying to find a way to classify them according to some logical criteria. In his book, Crania Americana, a pattern has been shown of decreasing brain size proceeding from East Asians, Europeans, and Africans. Psychologist J. Philip Roston, in his work, race, evolutions, and behavior also claimed that an average in the Ukrainian volume of 1,364 cubic centimeter for East Asians, 1,347 for White Caucasians, and 1,268 for Black Africans. Morton's followers, particularly Josia C. Nott, and George Glidden in their monumental tribute to Morton's work, Types of Mankind, carried Morton's ideas further and claimed that his finding in fact supported the notion of polygenism which claims that humanity originates from different lineages and is the ancestor of the multi-regional hypothesis. However, Charles Darwin opposed Norton Glidden in his book The Descent of Man, arguing for a monogenism of the species. Darwin conceived the common origin of all humans, that is, the single origin hypothesis, as essential for evolutionary theory. Paul Broca, in 1875, published a paper containing instructions regarding craniometry and chronology. Broca, Tanner, and Plower 
how that developed the study of stones on the concept of lumen vac. Plower invented a sliding caliper with cut arms on one side and straight arms on the other, which has come to be known as Plower's caliper. Craniometric conference were held at Munich and Berlin. Coleman, Rank, and Burtzow preferred a scheme for chromatic techniques based on the deliberation at the previous conference. This scheme was presented and approved at the 13th General Congress of the German Anthropological Society held at Frankfurt in 1882. Cesar Lombroso, the founder of anthropological criminology, who had claimed to be able to scientifically identify links between the nature of a crime and the personality or the physical appearance of the offender. He concluded that skull and facial features were clues to genetic criminality and that these features could be measured with craniometers and calipers. A few of the 14 identified traits of a criminal included large jaws, forward projection of jaw, low stopping forehead, high cheekbones, flattened or upturned nose, handle-shaped ears, hawk-like noses or fleshy lips, hard-shifty eyes, scanty beard or baldness, insensitivity to pain, long arms, and so on. Martin defined 813 measurements of which 531 are for the skeleton and 282 for the skull, as well as 256 indices for the skeleton and 108 for the skull. M. F. Ashley Montagu gives 78 measurements, 49 for the skeleton and 29 for the skull, together with 18 indices, 9 for the skeleton and 9 for the skull. Fraseto describes 42 measurements and 10 indices for the skull and 210 measurements and 58 indices for the skeletons. Georges Vassar de la Porge became responsible for introducing the trend of dividing human beings into different races from Aryans to ancient Greek and came up with new conclusions based on the measurements of skull. In 1933, Buxton and Moran gave the definition of the points of measurements in their joint work, the essential chronological techniques. Since then, many anthropologists came forward with their attempt to standardize the observational studies. Now, let us come to the planes of orientation of a skull. In order to take measurements, more particularly angular measurements, the skull must be oriented on a fixed plane, which must be well defined and accepted by all workers. Historically, many planes have been suggested, and Krogman has described 
up to 20, but only five planes generally used can be mentioned here. First, Broca's plane. Second, Frankfurt Horizontal Plane. Third, Nation Union Plane. Fourth, Glabella Union Plane. Fifth, Glabella Lambda Plane. Broca's plane extends from the alveolar point to the lowermost point of the occipital condyle when the skull is resting on a horizontal surface. The Frankfurt Horizontal Plane is based on placing the right and left orient and the lowest point of inferior margin of preferably the left orbit in the same horizontal plane. It is used as a constant plane of reference by the physical anthropologist when he is measuring and describing skull. When dealing with the incomplete skull, which lack one of these points, measurements are oriented by nascent NN, glabella NN, and even occasionally the glabella lambda planes or lines. Now let us come to the conclusion. Clinometry is the technique of measuring the bones of the skull. With the knowledge of the craniometric methods, we could compare humans to the other animals. The knowledge of craniometry can easily tell us the age, sex, stature and different races of any unknown fragmented skeletons. The present trend and progress of craniometry has been categorized as three approaches of studies. First, any system of measurements is to be made uniformity among all observers. Second, the methods of statistical science and craniometric data is to be enhanced. Third, the extension of these systems of measurements and of the methods of dealing with them on statistical planes to the study of large numbers of the skulls of domestic and feral animals. Thus, the complexity of kinometric studies has gradually increased. All these new approaches should be taken into consideration at any new kinometric findings.